all and welcome to another crafting adventure and it's been a while as I have been traveling but I am back now and ready to continue making things and today we are gonna be making this strange Halloween themed basket thing as it is October and that is the time for Halloween goods now this is actually a paper craft kit a paper craft band kit to be precise and well it makes that. Now, to do this, we are going to need some scissors, a ruler, which I assume means tape measure, as it has in the past, a chalk pencil, glue, and some pegs. I have the pegs in the basket that I wove in one of the previous this type of kit videos. I'll put a link down below. But, first things first, we want to find out what exactly is inside this packaging. Inside this kit we have both a black and an orange cord, the orange one being a lot longer. And each one of these is separated into 12 individual, well, paper strings, I don't really know what you call them, but it's separated into 12 of them. And of course, in addition to this, the most important thing, the instructions. And according to this, the first thing you need to do is to cut the orange bit because, well, that's the main piece and the black is just used to make the face. And the orange one, first thing we need to do is cut three 30 centimeter lengths. Once you have your 30 centimeter pieces, then you need to separate them into six of these pieces thick, which means you're gonna have to use a knife or some scissors or something and simply put it between them and then put pressure on to cut it all the way down just like this although you really want to be careful it does get stuck sometimes and you don't want to put it at the wrong angle and cut it in a funny shape so take your time with all three of these until you have six 30 centimeter strips each six uh, strings wide. Then put these aside for a moment because next you're going to need to cut the remaining orange into a 200 centimeter strip. Be careful when cutting and measuring the lengths of this orange because there is only a small 10 centimeter or so strip left at the end. But once you have your two meter strip here then you need to separate this into six two thread thick pieces. So you're going to have to cut it very carefully just two, 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 until you have six 200 centimeter pieces, two strings thick. Once you have separated the 200 centimeter piece into six pieces of this thickness, you can put that aside for a moment and come back to the 30 centimeter pieces we cut earlier. Now, you're gonna have to measure the 15 centimeter line on each one and glue them to create three crosses like this. I've decided to use a plastic clothes peg just to hold these in place while we wait for the glue to dry. So we're gonna put them aside and make the first uh, long piece for weaving. We will need two of the 200 centimeter piece of weaving thread for the face, which is what it's called in the instructions. And we're gonna take one centimeter and simply glue them overlapping like this and then again put a peg on to hold it in place while it dries. Once the 30 centimeter strips are all nice and firmly glued together, stack them like this in the center, evenly spaced to create a sort of wheel shape. Then all you need to do is glue them together in the center, use a peg to hold them together, and wait until that is completely dry. Once this piece is nice and firmly glued together, we can make a start on the weaving. And to do this, Take the two uh, 200 centimeter lengths that we've glued together in the middle and we simply need to fold it by here. Then hook this fold over one of these spokes and start weaving around the center. And we're just gonna go around five times to create the base. Once you've successfully gone around five times, uh, and you can count one, two, three, four, five on the inside of each of the uh, wheel spokes, then we can start making the side of the bucket. Now, I will mention that 
I had a bit of problem on the very first ring because the glue hadn't stuck very well between each layer, so take a bit of care there. Also, the um, string itself seemed to twist as I was going around, so if you take a bit of time, you can probably get a much better finish. However, to start the sides, first all you need to do is to fold each one of these firmly upwards like so. Once you have all the edges pointing up like this, you just use the remaining pieces of the thin string to continue weaving. According to the instructions, you should be able to go around nine more times. If you can't, just glue one of the remaining pieces uh, to a one centimeter piece at the end here, like we did to create the first weaving piece. Quick update on the uh, side of the bucket. Um, I didn't get the full nine, I only managed to get four times around before I had to extend the weaving thread by gluing another 200 centimeter piece to each side. So once that's done, all you've got to do is continue this until you have the full nine. Okay, and once you've finished the nine times around the side like this, all you need to do from here is you need to finish eight more rings, but each time, pulling these slightly apart to give a kind of bucket sort of shape where it gets wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And if uh, during here these uh, orange weaving bits run out, you can just glue the final pieces onto the ends of each one to finish all the way around. So once you've gone all the way around and you're satisfied with the size and the shape, although this shape is a little bit strange, but it doesn't really matter, you should have about 17 rows uh, in total going up, and you can just count them by counting these bits here. Now with the excess of the weaving thread, all you need to do is cut it short by about here and just glue it on the inside. And do that with both ends and then just hold them in place with a peg and leave it to dry. And while we're waiting for the glue to dry on the ends of these weaving pieces, we can make a start on the decorations for the face and the handle. And to do this, take the black cord from earlier, and we're going to need to cut this into a 10 centimeter piece and a 22 centimeter long piece. The 22 centimeter long piece is going to be used to make the handle over the top of the bucket or basket, whatever you want to call it. And to make the decoration for this, take the excess weaving thread from earlier and cut four one centimeter strips out of it. Then take the ends of the handle and cut them into a kind of semicircle shape just to make it look a little bit nicer. Once you've cut the ends into a curved pattern, take two of the small one centimeter orange pieces you cut earlier and glue them on the end like so. And once the glue has dried on the basket, all we need to do is to fold over these top pieces so they cover the top layer of weaving. So this one will come out and this one will go in, out, in, out, in, and they alternate to give this sort of pattern where you have in, out, in, out, in, out, in, etc. And to finish them off, fold it all the way down and simply tuck it in through some of the weaving either on the inside or the outside depending which one you are doing. And it should tuck in quite nicely to give this sort of effect. And all you need to do is this 11 more times. Once all 12 are nice and down, you can see it's actually started to take the shape of the bucket. And I'm happy with that because it's good, although it does seem to go in a bit here, which is strange. But uh, from here you can stretch it and pull it as you like as it's quite sturdy. Now, once this has been finished, all you need to do is to take the handle that we made earlier and glue each side like so. And I recommend attaching a peg to each side as well to hold it in place while the glue dries and really wait an hour, maybe two hours, just to make sure it's very firmly set in this position. And to make the facial decorations, all you need to do is follow the stencils on the page here. Uh, essentially, we're going to need three triangles, two for the eyes, one for the nose, and then the mouthpiece like that. Now, the instructions do recommend uh, cutting these out and then using a chalk pencil to draw the outline on the black strip before cutting them out. And I think that's probably the best thing to do. Uh, the triangles you can probably do freehand, but the mouth you want to take a little bit of care with. Hmm, I don't have a white chalk pencil, but I will find a solution to this problem. 
After some trial and error, I did manage to cut the mouth out. Uh, it is six and a half centimeters long and 11 of the uh, individual threads wide. So once you've cut the piece to six and a half centimeters, you can just remove one of them and then cut it, well, roughly to the shape it is on the instructions to get the mouth. The triangles, um, you can just measure these and then flip them over and use them as a stencil till you have all three. And once you have all three triangles and the mouth, all you need to do is to stick them on in this pattern. So all you need to do now is wait for the handle to dry, find a good spot, preferably between the handles like this, and have the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Hopefully, once they're all glued in place, it should give you something that looks like this. Now, I have left the glue on these to dry overnight, and I did use this scotch tape, uh, particularly on the sides of the mouth, to make sure they all stuck well and in their correct position. And there you are. This is a Halloween bucket that you can use, um, and it is actually quite practical. Now, looking at the original design, uh, you can see mine, um, well, the design is similar, but for some reason mine goes in on the sides rather than out all the way up. But um, that aside, I, I think it, it's still okay. Um, yeah, if, if you do make one of these yourself, take a little bit of care on how much pressure you're putting on these side pieces, and then you can probably get a much better bucket shape. Um, if I put a little bit of pressure on it, I can probably bend it into the right position from here. But there you are, yeah, um, overall, Quite easy to make actually, the weaving on the side pieces wasn't too bad. Um, the bottom was a bit of a failure, particularly in the center. So my plan here is to make a stopper using this orange felt that I have left over from something else and simply put it inside to create a base. But overall, nice, easy thing to make. Does take quite a while, but that's more to do with measuring and breaking the paper into the uh, double threads. But apart from that, it was good.